Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Lund, and in this video, we're gonna react to another video uh, by Brian Johnson, who is this 44-year-old uh, um, CEO. He's a multimillionaire. He has founded different kinds of companies, and he has come out with this age reversal uh, routine that he calls the blueprint. And we're gonna react to it and uh, go through. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! All right, so this is the website that he has a blueprint.briansjohnson.co and uh, where he outlines the uh, main ideas of this uh, blueprint. Uh, the bro project blueprint aims to measure all 70 plus, 70 plus organs of my body and then maximally reverse the quantified bio biological age of each. So he has this uh, basically biohacking routine. This is him right now in 2022. Um, his chronological age is... Um, uh, 43 and uh, when he started his biological age which refers to like the age of his body or the health that was a uh, 47 years old so he was uh, biologically older than he was chronologically in April 2021 when he started this routine and now in November 2021 uh, which is uh, now as I'm recording then it's uh, January 2022 but uh, in November 2021 he was 42.5 uh, years uh, old biologically and it's you know two years younger than his chronological uh, age and this is what he looks right now so it's like very uh, skinny very lean and uh, probably has lost a bunch of weight and you know as you can see this is the person he was a few years ago uh, maybe like 42 41 years old and yeah he looks much older than uh, 41 years old compared to now uh, like in here he has a bit of uh, extra weight he has like grayer hair, uh, yeah, like just, you know, looks older than uh, he was. Whereas now he looks very young. You're getting too old for this shit. But I'll just get to the video, get more into the interesting stuff. I'll, I'll speed it up in uh, a bit faster. Morning. So we can uh, get through it faster because it's a long video, like 37 minutes. Uh, I'm right now and keep going. 163.9 and I'm pounds, of muscle. 7 pounds of bone, 22.2 BMI, 6% body fat, 60.7 water weight. All right. Every day I do think that, that those measurements were correct, uh, that 6% body fat, etc. Um, he's, he's not like very heavyweight, like he's 163 pounds, which is quite low. Um, yeah. I think he has lost significant amount of weight over the last uh, few months, which is part of the re biggest reason why he has experienced these uh, benefits to his health. He just has lost a bunch of weight because calorie restriction is the let's see the only few known ways of extending lifespan or slowing down aging that we know. Uh, although it's not you know completely clear, uh, it's yeah like the calorie restriction is going to be kind of the most biggest reason. So he's, you know, uh, taking a uh, ferritin or iron uh, supplements here. And, uh, you know, obviously that is, I think biggest reason for that is the vegan diet. So uh, he doesn't get like that much uh, heme iron, any like a uh, bioavailable iron from his food that much. And he's ferritin levels were low so he has to kind of supplement with iron uh, and vitamin C to increase his absorption. For regular people uh, if you're eat not eating a vegan diet then your chances are you don't really need an iron almost ever <laughs> um, unless you're bleeding a lot or something uh, or you get injured then you may need in the short term but uh, chronic iron supplementation or high levels of iron in a body are associated with atherosclerosis and heart disease and uh, just you know, aging, accelerated aging, so you don't want to take iron if you don't need to. And uh, if you're eating some iron foods, like, you know, there's a lot of iron in our food, uh, especially fortified foods like uh, cereals and grains, you get plenty of iron from that. Um, if you're eating meat, then you don't need any iron supplement probably ever. Uh, and also, one crucial thing about iron is that you actually need copper to basically absorb the iron better, convert it into hemoglobin, uh, utilize it, uh, release it from the iron stores, so copper is actually the biggest, let's say, leverage to uh, optimizing your iron status, not iron itself. And, uh, you know, copper you get from organ meats, etc. But you also get copper from, you know, dark chocolate and beans and those kind of things. So copper is kind of the missing ingredient all, a lot of times. You don't need iron, you chances me you need just increase the copper. His uh, daily calorie intake is 2,150. He's vegan 
16 hours daily fast, 70 pounds of veggies per month. Uh, his macros are 19% protein, 33% carbs, and 48% uh, fat. Uh, no testosterone therapy, no anabolic steroids. So this is his kind of morning smoothie that he makes. First, a little bit of water. I'll drink a total of about 48 ounces a day. We'll see uh, two and a half grams of creatine. Two and a half grams of creatine for a vegan, yes, a good idea. He may actually would benefit from more, like three to five grams even, because he doesn't any get he doesn't get creatine from his food. So uh, yeah, it would be good to get more. <laughs> Interesting to take manganese. Uh, yeah, manganese is impo important for uh, the antioxidant defense systems like copper oxide uh, dismutase or manganese superoxide dismutase, and uh, and uh, those things require minerals. And manganese you get a lot from uh, the seafood, uh, which again, like on a vegan diet, he may not uh, get that much. So here is the uh, concoction, water, liquid iodine, creatine, manganese, peptides, collagen peptides, spermidine, cocoa flavanols and cinnamon. So I, I looked at the document and it says that it's from chlorella spermidine. So spermidine is a, like an autophagy activator, boosts autophagy and autophagy is the process of clearing out cell particles and organelles, uh, waste material, those kind of things. And spermidine is a autophagy booster. I haven't researched that much how significant it is. Uh, I think, you know, this is, looks like, you know, it said it's chlorella. I'm not sure how much chlor how much spermidine it is in chlorella. Like spermidine you can get from some foods like a wheat germ, uh, some beans and uh, mostly like, yeah, like plant foods. Uh, chlorella it may have like some spermidine uh, I'm sure it maybe has a little bit uh, but even then like a little bit of like a supplement spermidine supplement would probably be more effective and more you know you, you would you wouldn't get a significant amount of spermidine from just chlorella or whole foods if you want to get some benefits of the spermidine then you need to take like a spermidine supplement that's the only way and uh, even then I'm not sure like how uh, important it would be to get spermidine as a supplement I'm, I'm not com completely convinced about that Yes, cocoa is good source of polyphenols and uh, flavanols, and uh, it's good source of copper as well. Uh, some magnesium tastes good as well and boosts dopamine and such. So yeah, why not? It's a good superfood in my opinion. Cinnamon. And cinnamon is usually used for like, mm, like insulin sensitivity improving insulin sensitivity and blood sugar management. He's like in the morning fasted. Uh, he's not really eating uh, sugar or carbs here. So maybe it's, you know, it's here, in here it's mostly for the taste probably, but, uh, and also insulin sensitivity, but uh, he, he wouldn't need to take the cinnamon uh, besides the taste. You look at this, you may wonder <laughs> if it's disgusting, it's not, it's delicious. Maybe I'm trying to think though, but I love to drink is I will. <laughs> One thing I got uh, thought about was like, you know, it looks like the American psycho uh, <laughs> morning routine. Like, oh, I take uh, this uh, three milligrams of spermidine or whatever and uh, do my stretching and I can do a hundred sit-ups now. <laughs> and he looks also like the Christian Bale from the American psycho uh, movie a little bit, like this very uh, lean and very uh, low body fat uh, person, <laughs> which isn't like a... I'm not saying it to offend him or something, it's uh, just funny, like, like, looks very similar. I believe in taking care of myself. A tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And uh, yeah, olive oil is also a good source of these polyphenols and uh, helps, helps things with cardiovascular health. And um, you do also need some uh, fat to absorb some of the supplements that he took or he's, he's about to take. Uh, so yeah, it's a good idea to take some, uh, you know, olive oil or something. I think olive oil is one of, one of the best fats uh, out there and yeah improves many aspects of health that'll be one of uh, three so 50 milliliters of olive oil each day okay so he takes uh 50 milliliters of olive oil every day First one. three times a day probably 
I'm at the table. I'm waiting. Lunch. Bedtime. Always about about 25 till I just take them in. This is the breakfast, 25 pills. A small handful. When you do a full fiction, at least for me, every morsel matters. I found myself looking my plate, but everything has to or just on 21 calories a day while working out, as much as I do, uh, you really appreciate everything you found. <laughs> Which is yeah, true, like uh, if, if you've ever done like bodybuilding or fitness, um, if you've ever been on like a severe calorie restriction for a long time, then yeah, you will start to um, savor <laughs> every bite almost and uh, it becomes very, you know, um, you become a, a lot of like hyper-focused about, yeah, like uh, the food and thinking about it and it's... Uh, yeah, you try to like savor every bite and to make sure that you get all the calories, <laughs> if, if, especially if you are eating only 2000 calories uh, per day, which isn't like that low actually. Um, like uh, there's a lot of people who uh, need to go below that, uh, but if you're exercising a lot, then 2000 calories can be uh, quite moderate uh, calorie restriction. He's not like that, like he's not that big, he's not uh, that tall, he's not that uh, high amount of uh, body weight. So for his daily caloric needs, he probably needs only like 2400 or 2500 at max, especially if he's working out and that 2100 that he's right now is just maybe like a 20%, 15% calorie restriction, which isn't uh, like uh, that uh, substantial. Okay, so it's like some workout stuff, I'm not gonna talk about yeah, that. He just works out, cardio, some weights, because like any form of exercise, any form of resistance training is gonna be beneficial, it's gonna improve things like um, autophagy and longevity markers and uh, help with weight loss and help with the uh, biomarkers, so I think any form of, yeah, is gonna be good enough. Okay, so this after the workout, this is the breakfast that he's gonna eat. My phone and they're uh, positive that Beauty disinfectant box every morning. My team and I make recipes and we try to create the perfect diet. Uh, that's why I consume 2,150 calories a day. And we try to make every single calorie perfectly suited to my body. We don't waste a single thing. And so this represents all of our scientific work, all evidence based medicine. We try to have zero guesswork. It's all based upon hundreds of measurements in my body. They generate the data and we Look at that from evidence-based medicine. I mean, inform me that recipes. I'll show you. So I think uh, you know, I'll comment a little bit about the that it's all you know, uh, evidence-based, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, which I agree. I think that the diet that he will follow, that he follows, is evidence-based. It does have health benefits, etc. It has micronutrients. It has all these different kind of superfoods, etc. Uh, but is it the only evidence-based method of uh, losing weight or uh, helping to reverse uh, biomarkers of aging? Then I don't. I think so. Uh, because yeah like the biggest thing that matters is the calorie restriction and weight loss in, in my opinion just uh, because you know first of all the longest longest living people in history uh, who have li lived the longest uh, they haven't eaten like a fully vegan diet they haven't eaten any special superfoods etc they've just practiced moderate calorie intake and uh, just all whole foods uh, both uh, plants and uh, meats and animal foods uh, they've just managed to stay uh, physically active and uh, maintain good health uh, by doing that Mm, I think also, given from my own, uh, my own experience and my own uh, experiments, I can tell that, yeah, like I've seen, or like at least my biomarkers of aging and uh, things like IGF-1 levels or um, blood sugar levels, uh, cholesterol levels, um, uh, what is the, the DNA methylation age, etc. Those type of things uh, have also been very good, very indicative of slowing aging, etc. My, like my biological age was nine years younger than my chronological age. Uh, although I, I'm eating a completely different diet than him, uh, like I do a more extensive intermittent fasting, I um, don't restrict my calories that much actually, I do more fasting and I eat a lot more protein, I eat a lot more animal foods, although I eat also plant foods. So I think that, you know, although this is one method of doing it, it's not the only one and uh, there are other ways uh, as well and the most important thing is that you don't overeat, you don't ex experience high amounts of like this metabolic syndrome and uh, metabolic disorders. 
you're physically active, your moderate calorie intake, uh, you do get your micronutrients, etc. You do get some maybe other superfoods, polyphenols, uh, olive oil, whatever, co cocoa, flavanols, those kind of things, uh, they may have some best positive effect, but the biggest, like 80% of the results will come just from the calorie restriction, uh, weight loss, and you know, sleeping good and exercising. So this is the breakfast, super veggie. It's uh, like some black beans, broccoli, and uh, stuff. Around 50 pounds a month, uh, vegetables. See. Which looks like, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what it looks like, but it's a very, like a big mess of uh, fiber. It's like a puree, big mess of puree. But it's broccoli cauliflower. Which you know doesn't mean that it wouldn't taste good. Maybe it tastes good. Uh, Ginger, garlic, mushrooms, hemp seeds. Uh, 300 grams of black lentils. You put it on there. A little simmer because it'll take me about 20 minutes to shower and get all my skincare done. And if I can come down, it'll be warm. And then we'll just down. And it'll be peace and joy as we eat super veggie and think about the day. And quickly, the most important thing is that I want to accomplish and think about. I really don't like listening to podcasts and news or anything because in doing that, I really uh, I absorb that energy close to the table. Um, and then again, cream with all the evidence based interventions. And this so this is the skincare routine, and this is where it looks like yeah, the American psycho, <laughs> where he puts on the skincare. Um, I'm not going to talk about the skincare because I don't really know that much about it, and uh, yeah, I don't think it ma matters that much. Then I apply an herb mint facial mask. So this is the food again, the breakfast, the glorious bowl of uh, pudding. Again, it's like for other people may leave things remaining, food remaining in the dish. I don't. It's such a slippery slope that if you if you allow one exception for any reason, it like kind of all falls apart. The next thing is going to all go down. This is uh, one of my favorite dishes. So this is like a lunch or something. Great pumpkin soup. Pumpkin soup. If I remember correctly, it's. If this is soup, then the morning uh, uh, super veggie is also soup. I mean, like it looks very similar in consistency. Three hundred grams of pumpkin, four hundred grams of potato. And then this is. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that it doesn't taste delicious. Yeah, I think it tastes good. It's just all the. F it's like he only eats like these uh, purees, like all these f calorie intake for the day is like purees and uh, pudding, <laughs> basically. Uh, there's no like chewable things, which is uh, interesting. Like uh, I don't think that there is no inherent requirement or need to have everything as this puree. Maybe he likes it; um, it's fine. Uh, but I personally would like to, you know, chew something. <laughs> so dinner is also some sort of a pudding <laughs> with pea protein. So the pea protein is good. Uh, yeah, that is a good vegan source of uh, protein. It's one of the best uh, vegan proteins. Use the fridge. Ah. Brazil nut for the selenium, uh, 15 calories. Uh, yes, Brazil nuts are a good source of uh, selenium, and you can get your daily selenium from yeah, just even a few uh, Brazil nuts. It's just that a half Brazil nut may not be enough, especially on a vegan diet. Like you get selenium a lot from uh, meats as well, uh, with the exception of Brazil nuts. So you, I would eat maybe like two, three Brazil nuts if I were. Uh, that's what I do personally daily. I eat uh, two to three Brazil nuts every day. And then, briefly, I drink wine today. I did three ounces, but I think my teeth will so And now I'm trying to get a sense component in a supplement that uh, is going to be released within a week. So this is probably referring to resveratrol. Um, so, yeah, like drinking wine isn't a good source of uh, resveratrol. It's not significant. You're not going to get any significant amount of resveratrol from uh, red wine. You would have to drink yeah like liters, so taking a supplement is kind of. Although and even then, like the uh, uh, evidence about the resveratrol isn't uh, that uh, accurate, or it's it doesn't actually have that big of an effect on uh, aging or longevity. With, uh, with the veggie and the pudding, I'll do the breakfast. So the cacao, I mean, yeah, cacao is a good superfood in my opinion, especially if you're vegan. Um, I think it's even good for yeah, like other uh, omnivores and such as well, for the copper and uh, all the other 
polyphenols and such. It's a very high in polyphenols. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then So trehalose is a sugar molecule and uh, it also boosts otavage, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm not using trehalose myself, although I may want to try it out in some day. Uh, but yes, it's uh, not known about uh, otavage booster. <coughs> and this is why do the treat for my therapy before every rejuvenation can be witnessed. And then this is why I do for about two minutes a day, 10,000 watts for uh, mood support and all. So he's doing a light therapy. The bright light, which is good for the circadian rhythm again, although, I mean, there's sunlight outside, I can see from his window. Uh, he could go, I mean, and he probably lives in California or something, so he can go outside and get <laughs> a lot more uh, natural sunlight with the full spectrum, which will also be very beneficial. He, I saw that he used the sun, uh, sunscreen, so he's probably afraid of the sun causing aging on the skin. Um, this light therapy device would also cause some aspects of, you know, radiation on the skin. So, you know, obviously you would... I wouldn't use only this. I I I would use it only yeah, like maybe five to ten minutes. This uh, bright face lamp or these big uh, artificial light, and I uh, would still get some natural sunlight because the you get more than just the wavelengths from the um, sunlight uh, solar spectrum. So it's the sunlight solar, solar spectrum tends to be a lot better. And when it comes to aging, then the uh, uh, the sunlight and the circadian rhythms uh, regulate also. Besides the circadian rhythms of cells, they regulate autophagy, they regulate obviously all the hormones, all the uh, longevity pathways in the body, as well as the NAD resynthesis. So uh, when it comes to NAD, then the recycling of NAD uh, is mediated through the sirtuins, and the sirtuins are linked to the circadian rhythm. So you need to be aligned, synchronized with the uh, day and night cycles, which means you know waking up in the morning, getting exposure to daylight, and going to bed, you know uh, before midnight and such, and uh, that would help your body to maintain sirtuin activation, which will then regulate the NAD resynthesis through this enzyme called NAMPT. And if this, um, basically, your circadian rhythms are misaligned, then this sirtuins get off, uh, NAMPT gets offline, and then you won't be able to recycle the NAD. And NAD is, uh, you know, low NAD will accelerate the accumulation of, of all these hallmarks of aging, which will mean that you start to experience mitochondrial dysfunction, you have low energy production, you have senescent cells, and uh, just, you know, this uh, aging will be faster if your NAD is lower and NAD will be low if you're not sleeping properly and if you're not uh, aligned with the circadian rhythm. So this, the light part is very crucial in my opinion uh, as well, that very, very important for besides the mood and, uh, you know, things like that directly for uh, anti-aging and directly for NAD and uh, longevity markers as well. And the red light is also good for the for joints and such, you know, that's a small thing. You know, I guess it's kids. So we also use new salt, which is a good uh, potassium chloride. So it's a low sodium and high potassium uh, salt. And this, I would have had a bowl of, of this, of rice or cocoa pebbles or... Although like he's eating a vegan diet, he's in calorie restriction, he's doing some intermittent fasting, he's sleeping well, I don't think that he needs to worry about like his blood pressure and his blood pressure was very low. And I mean, lower blood pressure isn't, doesn't mean it's healthier. So <laughs> I don't... And he's getting probably plenty of potassium from uh, the veggies and such. I don't think that you would need to be in like a low salt diet, completely zero salt. To uh, it's probably not going to have any longevity effect unless you have actual blo high blood pressure. Uh, so yeah, interesting why he would use uh, this salt is besides like regular salt. And crunch or you know any one of those, and with skin melt, which I don't know. Because he does, uh, you know. In this video, he already talks about a lot of the uh, negative side effects of calorie restriction, which is you know hyper focused about food, eating, and you know licking the plate and uh, <laughs> uh, being tired of it. Uh, he doesn't obviously he's uh, very uh, fit and healthy, but uh, but the calorie restriction uh, does have this effect where you become this slightly low thyroid and uh, very kind of try to preserve your motion. He doesn't uh, seem to have that. Like he doesn't seem to be like this like a frozen stick, <laughs> um, but like in, in the aspects of salt, for example, the salt would be actually something that would raise the blood pressure and help to prevent some of this low energy that you may get from this uh, calorie restriction. Here's the kind of uh, overview again, I'll, in more detail, 
5 a.m. wake up with meditation, 6 a.m. exercise, 7.30 uh, breakfast, um, 9 head to kernel, 11 uh, lunch, nutty pudding, 2 to 4 dinner. So he eats an early uh, dinner and he fasts for 16 hours, uh, which is also evidence-based that the early time sugar eating uh, has been found to uh, reverse many aspects of uh, biological aging and improve uh, health markers. So he starts eating at 7.30 and finishes dinner at you know, two, 2 to 4, which is, you know, a lot of people may find it uh, difficult and uh, unfeasible to stop eating at, you know, 2 to 4 is uh, most people's lunch. Like I, <laughs> like if I have lunch, then I'll have it at 2 to 4. Um, whereas he finishes eating at that time, you know, obviously there is, from a circadian rhythm side, there may be some benefit to being this early with the uh, food and not eating before bed, but uh, that can also be problematic for other people who uh, can't go to bed with an empty stomach and uh, may you know, just not be able to fall asleep. I think you have to find out which works for you. From a research side, there isn't that significant difference between uh, eating early and late, as long as you're uh, getting the same calories and as long as you're getting good sleep. So yeah, I wouldn't like break my you know, ahead over uh, eating either early or uh, late. I personally prefer to do the later time sugar eating that I skip breakfast and I'll eat later. Uh, but obviously you have to find out uh, which works for you. The circadian or the uh, intermittent fasting side, the longevity, obviously it boosts autology, uh, but it also helps with uh, this NAD recycling. So fasting activates AMPK, which is an enzyme that also turns on the NAMPT that then st starts to uh, recycle NAD levels and uh, that will help with uh, energy and uh, basically all aspects of your body. The, uh, but you also, as I said earlier, you need the sirtuins and the circadian rhythm alignment to have the NAMPT activated in the first place. And if you're, even if you have AMPK activated, but you don't have the circadian rhythms aligned, then you're not going to be uh, turning the NAMPT on either. So uh, first comes the circadian rhythm and then comes the uh, time receipt eating. So, uh, but if you're, let's say, messing up, your uh, circadian rhythms by eating in the middle of the night or whatever, then it may not be that beneficial for the NAD side, at least. Here are the supplements that he takes. B-complex, folate, folic acid and uh, pre metabolized forms. 0 0.15 pills a day. Yeah, like, like it's good for the vegan diet to get some B vitamins. Broco Max, uh, which I'm not sure what it is, but I think it's like so, so therapine supplement. Coco flavanols, 500 milligrams. D3, 2000 IUs. Mm, yeah, I think that he wouldn't probably need a more garlic, 2.5, 2.4 grams, uh, ginger root, 2.2 grams, glucosamine sulfate, uh, 1500 milligrams. Yeah, glucosamine is also good, uh, longevity supplement, anti-inflammatory effects and for the joints. But in actually higher amounts, it may be even better, like three, uh, three milligrams or three, um, 3000 milligrams, two to 3000 milligrams can be actually a bit better in my opinion. Uh, iodine as potassium iodide 125 micrograms which is yeah you on a vegan diet you would probably need it. Lithium one milligrams is uh, actually for the for the mood and um, like a, yeah like a brain side microdosing with lithium is a uh, good or you wouldn't want to be deficient in lithium but you may not need need it either if you're getting uh, from a diet. Lycopene 10 milligrams lysine nicotinamide riboside 375 milligrams so yeah, he takes NR, obviously there's others like NMN that probably work as good as nicotinamide riboside. I think there's not a huge difference in them, in my opinion. Turmeric with piperine, one grams, taurine, one grams, ubiquinol, 100 milligrams, zinc, 15 milligrams. That's the breakfast supplements, the lunch supplements, brocomax again, uh, sulforaphane, vitamin C, 250, coca flammol, 500 milligrams, D3, Aha, so he takes uh, the D3 uh, two times a day, so 4,000 I use uh, every day. EPA, 500 milligrams, with vitamin E, 5 milligrams. Garlic, 2.4 grams, again. Ginger root, 2.2 grams. Oh, so glucosamine sulfate, again, 1,500 milligrams. So he takes 3 grams of glucosamine every day. Hyaluronic acid, 300 milligrams. Lithium, 1 milligrams. Lycopene, 10 milligrams. Lysine, 1 milligrams. Nicotine and again, 275 milligrams. So uh, in total, 750 uh, milligrams of uh, NR a day, which is a good amount. Probiotic, 8 billion microorganisms, turmeric 1 gram, taurine 1 gram, ubiquinol 100 milligrams. So yeah, you don't want to be basically taking all the supplements in one uh, go. You, it can be beneficial to spread out a little bit, especially things like um, some, some fat-soluble uh, vitamins like ubiquinol.
Before bed, DHEA, 25 milligrams melatonin, 300 micrograms. Yeah, I think that's good. Melatonin is a good anti-aging and longevity supplement. But you don't want to be taking large amounts, so 300 micrograms is kind of perfect. Other things that it takes, 3 tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil daily. Pea protein, about 29 grams a day, and collagen, 20 grams a day. So in total, he doesn't specifically outline how much protein does he eat. Uh, but he looks like, but it looks like he gets a bit less than a hundred grams of protein. Like on a vegan diet, you have much less to worry about high protein intake, because the vegan diet and the plant-based proteins are low in methionine, which is the crucial amino acid that appears to be associated with aging and uh, cancers and stuff. So on a vegan diet, you don't need, even need to restrict the protein, <laughs> because uh, the uh, low methionine content and a uh, high protein intake can be, you know, just more beneficial for bones and uh, joints and stuff. Obviously, too high protein intake is also not good. 19, 19% protein is his macros, which um, I personally would want 25, uh, especially on a vegan diet. It can be a better to have 25%, but 19% is already a bit higher than the standard American diet. So yeah, it's a minimum amount. I think uh, any less than that would be uh, not good, but 19% is a... Uh, yeah, it's a good uh, amount, maybe 25% I would uh, aim for. So in conclusion, as you can see, this is this uh, Brian Johnson's... Uh, so in conclusion, this is uh, Brian Johnson's uh, longevity routine, anti-aging routine that he does. He is measuring his biological age frequently every month and it is declining. Obviously, I don't think it's finished. It will probably continue to decline. He may get below 40 with his biological age uh, because he started only in April. It's not even been a year. And um, I don't know what he exactly looked like when he started. Probably he was exercising already before that and lost a little bit of weight compared to the older pictures. Uh, but yeah, regardless, he's uh, on the right track. And you, as you can see, it's never too late to start to improve your health and uh, slow down the process of aging. I think it's a very uh, good to see that you know, if you see the before and after pictures, then uh, yeah, he looks a lot younger. He looks yeah, definitely 10 years younger than uh, he did a few years ago. And it's working, obviously it's working. Is his method, the blueprint, the only method of doing that? I don't think so. Um, he has some, obviously, yeah, like very interesting and very good um, points, like just, you know, calorie restriction is very important, exercise important, resistance training. Uh, the polyphenols, I, I, uh, I like creatine, some supplements. Uh, I'm not against any of the supplements that he took. Uh, those are, I think, uh, are evidence-based. The diet, uh, vegan diet, uh, yeah, like, um, I think a vegan diet will is a, like a very easy way to see some improvements in your health because it's very low in calories generally. It's hard to uh, overeat just you know fiber and stuff. It can be filling, it can be satiating. It uh, does have some other beneficial beneficial effects as well. Is it the only thing you don't need to be fully vegan? I think uh, I, I don't think that a fully carnivore diet is <laughs> that beneficial. But you don't need to be like a, on a fully vegan diet to see those benefits. Uh, like like I said, I did my biological age, age test as well. I was 16 with my biological age, which is nine years uh, younger than my chronological age, although I eat like three times more protein than him <laughs> and uh, a bit more calories. I'm not overeating calories, uh, but I'm definitely not vegan and I eat uh, high amounts of uh, protein as well. And my, my uh, biological age score was still very young and I was doing the right thing. My bio biomarkers were also uh, optimal and good. So yeah, obviously there's many ways of doing that. and. Uh, one may not necessarily be better than the other. You just have to find out which, what works for you. I personally do, yeah, like one meal a day and intermittent fasting and different kinds of methods. Uh, resistance training, obviously, different kinds of supplements. And I do think that it's very, um, the kind of main principles are similar. That you need to turn on these different kinds of longevity pathways in the body. And obviously, the most important thing for that is not overeating and calorie restriction. And of course, intermittent fasting can mimic some aspects of calorie restriction. Um, but yeah, it's a very, you know, situational or nuance you can structure it in uh, many different ways all right that's it for this video make sure you click like all right that's it for this video if you want to learn more about these kind of topics uh, and what i do then check out my videos about it and my book metabolic Catology. other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Steve. stay optimized stay empowered